and it is the, the just the consistent, persistent action. And like I said, the reality blog shines a light on that and helps people see, okay, this is what it takes, but it does work. When I say that I offer reality blog services, people often ask me, what is a reality blog? So a reality blog is used by companies that want to market themselves more organically via content, using content to showcase and highlight their services. And the basic concept of a reality blogger is that someone comes in from the outside to use your product or your service or your information marketing toolkit and shows week by week, month by month, how they use it to build their business, improve their lives, whatever it is your service does. Of course, this can be adapted to all sorts of different methods and ways from daily content to video, to testimonials, to interviews, to just telling the stories of clients, just as long as it's consistent and real life, showing more the human side of things. I've been the reality blogger at Wealthy Web Writer for a year now, and I thought I would interview Heather Robson, who is the managing editor of Wealthy Web Writer, about what the value of having a reality blogger brings to their site and their information marketing toolkit. So I just wanted to ask you what the value is to you of having a reality blogger. Um, so as the managing editor of Wealthy Web Writer, my primary job is to bring things of value to our community at large. Uh, and one of the things that we've noticed over the years is, well, it is really, really good for our members to hear from experts and to hear from uh, wild success stories it is also really helpful for them to hear from somebody who is just a couple of steps in front of them. It's so much easier for them to visualize going from where they are to where a reality blogger is than going from where they are to where Ben Settle is or where Brian Clark is or where Nick Esborn is. Uh, or sometimes even where um, somebody who is newer to this but is still a big success story like uh, Mindy McCourse or Christina Gillick or, or Steve Maurer. Um, and so that's what the reality blog really bling, brings to our community. It um, shows a writer who is uh, in a very similar position to them, but maybe moving forward a little more quickly uh, or with a little bit more purpose. Um, it shows them that path that that person is on and it can make this whole journey of becoming a paid writer seem much more tangible and much more achievable. And I think that is very important for our wealthy web writer audience. Yeah, uh, that was kind of my impression too, because I um when I wasn't the reality blogger and I was watching other reality bloggers, it was it was kind of encapsulated the idea for me that it wasn't just, you know, the Nick Osborns and even like the Steve Mowers, the rocket shot guys who could just do it overnight, it seemed like. And it was like some people struggled and some people and you know, even the even like I I went back and reread some of Candace Lazar's uh, mm -hmm. reality blogs before I got started and it was like to me she's this big success story and she's mm -hmm. she's so far ahead and yet mm -hmm. when you go back and read her weekly blogs it was like yeah there was quite a bit of struggle and this was how she came mm -hmm. up with the solution to this problem and it really helped me to visualize it for myself. Yeah. One of the things I think the reality blog, a couple of things that really brings home. So you just mentioned those, you know, skyrocket to success, the overnight success. Um, and, and every overnight success story has years and years of background work and effort and sometimes struggle and frustration that we never really saw because they, they weren't a name yet. Like, you know, Brian Clark wasn't just Brian Clark, he was, you know, a, a lawyer and a real estate person and then started doing copy blogger and built kind of a, an online empire. But uh, that was years in the making for him before he became this household name among copywriters. Um, Steve Maurer is the same way. You know, he's he's wonderfully successful and has this and they found a new path. But often that frustration and that, that work that we're putting on goes unseen. And the reality blog is kind of nice because it shines a light on it. Um, and one thing that I tell most writers um, that I think is sometimes really hard to believe, but the reality blog makes it easier to believe is if you stick with it, you do hit a tipping point. Um, I've seen that time and 
time and time again. And it can feel like, oh, you know, she was doing everything right and it wasn't converting the way that she wanted to. And now, you know, a few years later, she's uh, copy chiefing for Jeff Walker. So um, she did. She hit that tipping point. She hit that snowball effect and everything just kind of ballooned into the success story that we see. So the reality blog gives people a chance to see, you know, yeah, if I stick with this and it might take a couple of years of sticking with this and figuring things out, but the consistent action, the constant forward motion, um, eventually it does click together. And I see writer writer who, you know, they start out with uh, where do I start? And, you know, how do I get clients? And I'm just, they're bringing to me are, how do I manage my time? <laughs> because I have all of these deadlines and it's really freaking me out. Um, I have too many clients. What do I do? So um, the, the reality blog sets a writer up kind of um, forces them to take that persistent, consistent action. Um, and we see it over and over again. I mean, you look at Mindy, she was our original reality blogger that could just consistent action paid off really, really big. Christina Gillick was one of our early reality bloggers. She's uh, incredibly successful at her own e-commerce business. Uh, Jim Wright was one of our early reality bloggers. And often I can't even get him on my calendar these days because he's too busy. And we have Candace uh, Lazar. And most of our reality bloggers, even if they're not a big success story and they're kind of off doing their own thing, they are seeing success with this. Um, and it is the, the just the consistent, persistent action. And like I said, the reality blog shines a light on that and helps people see, okay, this is what it takes, but it does work. Yeah. That was one thing, like all the different stories you mentioned, you know, there were the ones that went from really struggling. Like I kind of got the sense that Candace Lazar was uh, struggling quite a bit with her, with her business before she got into the reality blog. And like that just sort of, like with me, it flipped the switch between theory and action. Mm -hmm. And that was what I needed out of it for, for yeah. being the reality blogger. And then also it was like, there's so many different reality bloggers, like you said, and it's like the one before me, um, Andrew Murray, I think yes. his, was his name. And he's very successful too. I, I yeah. should have mentioned Andrew as well, because he's amazing. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, I got one thing I got from Andrew's story was that it does success looks so different for different people. Like his right. idea of success was being able to travel around the country and other people's idea of success was building a business or building an empire or, mm -hmm. you know, basically almost using copywriting as a springboard and other people just kind of got real comfortable with that. And so it was, it was really helpful for me from the outside to see how the different you know, it's okay to want something that someone else doesn't want. Kind of exactly. Thing. I think that's a big mistake a lot of writers make is they um, they take on somebody else's goals uh, because they feel like that's what they should do. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it, I struggled with that a uh, long time in my early career because I was like, well, you know, you're supposed to make six figures as a writer. And I wanted to homeschool my kids and have time to play and make my bills was basically what I wanted to do. And it took me a couple of years to be like, you know, this is OK. This is what I want. And this is, you know, where I'm at right now. And it's totally fine. I'm not making six figures. I'm doing well. I have clients. I have all this time to spend with my family and go out and play and have fun. So Success is definitely different for everyone. Yeah. So, like, do you see, um, one thing I was curious about was, like, do you see more engagement across the board with your Wealthy Web Writer content when you have a reality blogger? Or is it, like, just that there's just that much more of a column for your, for your website? Yeah, so, we've always had a reality blogger, so I don't uh. have a... I don't have a control there to compare to. Um, I do see that. Um, so we have two kinds of content on the site. We have the um, the free content and that gets the highest engagement because that reaches the broadest audience. Um, but in our paid content that is reserved just for members um, of the printed content, the reality blog tends to get the most engagement. Interesting. That is interesting. Well, um, <laughs> I guess it must work. How long have you had a reality blogger then? Because I, I didn't realize Mindy was the first one. And I mean, as long as I've been a part of AWAI, she's been the, 
managing editor of the Barefoot Writer, I think. So it's like she's always been one of those that's (laughs) way up there in the stratosphere. And I didn't realize she was the first. She was our, our, yeah. And she actually came up with the concept. Um, (gasps) She came to Rebecca um, and said, what if we did this, this crazy thing? And uh, we were like, okay, well, let's do it. And she was... um, she was like her first year, I think she was publishing three times a week, which got to be a little bit crazy. Um, And she was doing some video content, but uh, we launched, we did our soft launch in November of 2009. And then we did our full launch January of uh, 2010. So we have had a reality blogger uh, every year since 2010. So Mindy did, Mindy did three years. Um, and then we had two years where it was, um, uh, Christina and Marianne and Jim were doing it all together. And then, um, Candace and Haley were together for a year and then Candace was solo for a year. And then Tracy Clements did it for a year. And then we had Andrew Murray for two years. And then we had you for a year and <laughs> now for a second year. Yay. So you are going into the 12th year of, of a reality blogger on Wealthy Web Writer. <laughs> yeah. That's wow. That is impressive. I didn't realize that was such a, I, I mean, I guess you just come into it at a certain point and you're like, well, this thing must have been going forever. And, mm-hmm. and you, you look back. Yeah. And you look back and you're like, well, no, 2010 was not forever. It was just a milestone and certainly, but it's not like it has been ever since and it always will be. It gives me more of a sense of appreciation for it, I guess. But um, yeah, but in terms of wealthy web writer, it has been going on forever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's been since the beginning. Yep. Yeah. I think it must be like one thing I liked about seeing the reality blogger before I was one and then being the reality blogger. It's like you feel like you get more in touch with people's stories too. Like it 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 the 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 accumulated wealth of the content kind of becomes a, a proof in itself. Like it's a, it's a case study, an ongoing case study element to it. I thought. Definitely. Definitely. And I think it's very inspirational because every reality blogger, like you said, they have different ideas of success. Um, they also have different ideas for what they're going to try in order to build that success. And so people can kind of see, oh, OK, so, you know, Candace tried that. I'm going to try that and see what happens. Or, you know, Marianne tried that. I'm going to try that and see what happens. And so um, we get to see kind of this little lab experiment going on. And uh, and a yeah. lot of writers can be like, OK, I'm going to try to replicate that experiment in my own business, which is, you know, how science works. They try to replicate. <laughs> yep. And it's like you just sort of fine tune down to the details. I know some some of the articles I've written, I get I get feedback like every once in a while you get a comment like, oh, that's such a good idea. I have that exact problem. I'm going to try it. And then other times like I wrote one about dealing with health issues as a writer and some some people wrote in, you know, I have that exact same problem. And those are the exact things that I've, you know, weeded out of the out of the craziness that make it work for me so it's like it's validation and it's experimentation and and connection you get to see yourself reflected in other people and other people see you reflecting their story at them and that um I think that can be very inspiring um and very grounding it's like okay um there are other people that are having the same struggles that I am and they're persisting and I can persist with them and it just you know it lets us know we're not alone which I think is really important too um particularly with freelance writing cuz we can feel sometimes a little bit isolated yeah definitely mm-hmm. i know i always felt i i uh was a fiction writer, a novel writer before I started copywriting. And it was such an isolationist thing. Like there was no community. There was no support. It felt like it probably was, but it's a lot harder to tap into not yeah. knowing the marketing side of things. And it's like, right. I think now if I, when, when I get back to restarting it, it'll be like, I know how to build a community and I know how to reach out for help. But when you just, the, the thing about the copywriting was there's all these different elements and the reality blog has been a real big one for helping Good. me build my confidence. So. Good. And I think you're helping a lot of writers build their confidence. So we're paying it forward. <laughs> Thank you. 